Hamas has released a disturbing statement. The terror group's military wing says that Hamas members assigned to guard Israeli hostages have killed a male captive and seriously wounded another two female hostages. Now, at this point, the Israeli army says it can neither confirm nor deny the claim. But Abu Obeda, the spokesman for the Al Qasim Brigade, says that the shootings happened in two separate incidents and that attempts are now being made to save the lives of the wounded hostages but he's not identified who they are or where this actually took place. Now, he's blaming the incident on what he's describing as Israeli massacres against Palestinians following ongoing IDF operations in Gaza. And this marks the first time that Hamas has said that its guards killed hostages. The terror group usually attributes previous killings of hostages to Israeli strikes. Just a reminder, it is believed that 111 of the hostages abducted by Hamas on October 7th remain in the Gaza Strip, including the bodies of 39 confirmed dead by the IDF. I'd like to turn now to our senior editor, Ali Wakid. He joins us in the studio. Okay, so, you know, I, I think the main question is, first of all, is Hamas bluffing here? Is this psychological warfare? Or could this be true? No, I think it is more for uh, warfare, uh, uh, Natasha. I think when uh, Hamas sees that the families are uh, organizing a, a rally to put pressure over the uh, government at the eve of the uh, renewal of the uh, talks uh, this uh, uh, Thursday, uh, they want to exert this uh, pressure over the uh, families, so the families exert their pressure over the uh, uh, the government. I think the most precious card of Hamas are the hostages, and more of that, the hostages who are still alive. This is why I don't believe in any way that Hamas is sacrificing the uh, uh, the precious card that he has, uh, uh, that it has in, in its hand, uh, especially when we're talking about a new round of, uh, of negotiations. I want to tell you that I don't believe that at the end of the day, Hamas want to give up all the hostages it has. They want to keep some of the hostages, I believe the military uh, one, and get rid of the civilians. Mm -hmm. in, for, of course, as as part of a, of a deal in which they receive uh, some months of uh, ceasefire, which we know that the prime minister is against uh, uh, for the moment. But I think, uh, uh, Natasha, that if it's happened, uh, first it's against the Sharia laws. The Sharia laws asked a Muslim to keep, to give all the uh, uh, all the treatment needed to a hostage to a prisoner this is why i don't believe that they did this and as you uh, mentioned in the past they say that due to strikes that the aid, the, the idf carried at this or that uh, uh, zone in the in the gaza strip some hostages were killed and uh, unfortunately it it really happened now, I just kind of want to talk about Hamas's policy as a whole and how it might be changing as a result of the fact that Sinwar has been named now the political chief. We're hearing that he is more in communication now uh, with the organization of Hamas than he has been in the past. He's able to actually make more calls than what we've seen. So could you perhaps say that we're going to see a, a kind of change in the way that negotiations are carried out on Thursday if they actually do take place in regards to ceasefire deal? Hamas... Uh, Hamas showed some flexibility when they did not put as, as a condition the end of the at the end of the war at the very beginning they said without this close that at end of war we're not coming to the negotiations there will not be any uh, deal then they said we're ready for six weeks of ceasefire hoping that the international community especially the united states will leverage this uh, weeks into a, a longer uh, period in which they will discuss the day after now this is tricky because hamas is against the day after as exactly like the prime minister is against the day after because the day after should see no Hamas at the uh, at the Gaza Strip. This is why I think they will keep this card of of the hostage until like the maximum they can. So at at any point of time, the international community, especially Israel, especially the families, mm -hmm. will try to negotiate with Hamas directly or indirectly to release the last hostage that they uh, uh, that they have. And Hamas, of course, will demand political demands, not only uh, Palestinian uh, prisoners. Hamas is fighting for its survival, for its political uh, uh, survival, uh, uh, Natasha. And this is why they will not give the, they will not give up right. the most important card they have in their hands. All right, now. 
Well, just, you know, in regards to Hamas's power at this point, obviously, uh, we've seen varying reports, CNN saying that Hamas is stronger than the Israeli army is at least revealing to the public. After 10, min 10 months of fighting, we saw two long-range rockets that were fired today uh, into central Israel. That's the first time since late May. I mean, the reality on the ground right now, what is the truth here? How the, strong is the Hamas? The reality on the ground is Hamas is much weak, very much weaker than it was uh, uh, in October 7. This is this is clear. The organization lost many of its uh, uh, elements, financially, uh, uh, fighters, uh, uh, money, support of the of the population. But the truth is that if Israel is not present, present on the ground with hundreds of thousands of soldiers, Hamas will be able very quickly to rebuild itself in everywhere Israel and the IDF leave this zone. And since we know that we are now talking about like 10, 15 percent of the soldiers in, in Gaza Strip, 10 to 15 percent of the soldiers that were, were in Gaza at the beginning of the, uh, of the war, which means that uh, in most of the areas, Hamas is capable to rebuild itself. It is true that everywhere the IDF have the information that Hamas rebuilt its troops. Uh, uh, IDF launched strikes there, but this is an endless uh, uh, game. And Hamas is joining the fact that there is uh, enjoying the fact that there is no alternative. And as long as there is no alternative, the Palestinian people on the streets in Gaza, even those who are critical, even those who are opposed to to Hamas, will understand that. Israelis are not serious. When uh, the posi official position of the state of Israel is uh, no Hamas land and no Fatah land, right. so uh, they understand that Hamas is the only alternative right now on the ground.